Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is book, B-O-O-K. And now, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples tonight to win $2,000. George, who's first to try for it? Groucho, Mrs. Alice Cooper and Mr. Sean Moore Rice are waiting to meet you. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word and you'll divide an extra hundred bucks. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Alice Cooper and Sean Moore Rice, eh? Now, what kind of a name is Moore Rice? Well, Moore is Rice... Is that Moore Rice or I'll come out? Moore Rice means big rice. Big rice? Yeah, Moore is Gaelic for big. Oh. Rice, Mayor of course... Is garlic for big? Well, rice is uh, an anglicized form of Omal Creevy, which all... Well, you've lost me already, Sonny, huh? <laughs> Didn't take long, huh? And Sean, of course, means John and Gary. Yeah, yeah. So my true. full name is Big John mm. Omal Creevy. I see. You know, some of my best friends are Irishmen, too, like Harry McRuby uh -huh. and <laughs> David O'Selsnick. And... <laughs> How long have you been in America, Sean? Oh, about 30 years. 30 years, yes. Huh? And how does America compare with the old South? It's a grand free country. After all, there are 24 million people of Irish descent in this country. There are, huh? Yes. Well, have you ever kissed the Blarney Stone? I did, indeed. Uh, how does that compare with your wife? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, the Blarney Stone is supposed to give you the power of speech. When I kiss my wife, I'm speechless. <laughs> Well, uh, Mrs. Cooper, I'm sorry I've neglected you, but what do you think of this charming Irishman here? Oh, I think he's a splendid uh, specimen of an Irishman. Isn't he, yeah? I think that's a whole lot for an Englishwoman to say. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a very attractive woman, uh, Mrs. Cooper. Could you give us some idea of your age? Would you really like to yeah, know yes, how old I, I am? Yes. Well, I'm within a, a couple of months of being 83 years oh. old. You could pass for 60, and nobody could call you a liar, Mrs. Cooper. Well, thank you very much, Marcus. Yeah, wonderfully young-looking woman. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, let's find out some facts about you. What do you do for recreation? Do you go in for water skiing and mountain climbing and things like that? Oh, dear, no. I've never had time for that. I um, raise roses in my little bitty garden. I see. That's mine, too. I don't grow any roses, but I have the biggest ladybugs in Beverly Hills. <laughs> What other interests do you have besides ladybugs and Mrs. Cooper? Well, I belong to several charitable organizations. Oh. I belong to the uh, Motion Picture Mothers Incorporated. The Motion Picture Mothers? Club? Motion Picture Mothers. Isn't that composed of mothers of famous movie stars? Mothers of movie stars. Well, are you Jackie Cooper's mother? No. Lola Bridget's mother? Yes, again. You, are you Gary Cooper's mother? I am. Really? <laughs> I'll be hornswoggled. <laughs> I've known Gary Cooper since, uh, well, since he was, uh, let's see, he was about this hard. <laughs> yep, yep. Don't you fall. How is it you, uh, how is it you didn't say yep, Mrs. Cooper? Well, you know, that's, uh, that's a stock and trade uh, uh, thing that we don't use only on special occasions. I see. Your son is one of the real all-time greats in Hollywood. And I'm sure you must be very proud of him. He's Thank a real you. chatterbox, too. Yes, sir, I've yes. been watching him for 20 years in the movies, yes. and I would say conversationally, he's about six words ahead of my brother Harpo. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, Mrs. Cooper, has old Blabbermouth always been the strong, silent type? Well, I tell you, uh, Groucho, when uh, the children are little and they chatter, my husband, he was uh, quite a fairly famous attorney, and, uh, I knew he was, your husband. He was great. I used uh, to go to the ballpark with him, you know. Uh, so I understand, yes. He used to laugh about you. He used to make him laugh. Yes, I did. Well, anyhow, so did that ball team. Huh? He used to tell the, <laughs> he used to tell the boys... He finished last that year. Now, will you listen to me a minute? <laughs> You know, if I keep listening to you, you know what's going to happen to me? No. There'll be somebody replacing me here tomorrow. 
<laughs> Selling cooking recipes Well, up Daddy there. used to say, <laughs> if um, whenever you want to say anything, be sure you have something to say, otherwise hold your tongue. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Cooper, I guess there's not much left for me to say. Except I think you're just wonderful. With a mother like you, I'm not surprised Gary's such a nice guy. All right, now, let's play your bet your life and see how much money you can win. George, uh, you tell him the rules. All right. Um, Roger will ask you some questions. If you miss any two in a row, you're all through. But if you get any four in a row correct, you win $1,000, plus a chance to try for $2,000 later on in the show. Clear? You select the general information. Get together on a single answer, and good luck to both of you. All right, here we go. In Roman numerals, how much is three X's? 30. 30. 30? 30? 30 is right. Yeah. Well, three more right, and you'll have $1,000. In what town is Yale University? Hartford. What is it? Hartford. No, it's New Haven, Connecticut. Very famous. You got one wrong now, another one, and you're out. No, don't get another one wrong. wrong. What, what religious group settled in Utah? Mormons. Mormons are right. That's right. You're back on the track. Three more to go. When is Columbus Day? Tell me the date. When is Columbus Day? I don't know. Well, it's October 12th. Well, one more wrong, and you'll be out. All right. Now, how many stripes on a corporal sleeve? Three. Two. 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 Two is right. Are well, you going again? You have one, three more, and you'll have a thousand. You say goodbye in English. How do you say it in Spanish? Adios. Adios. No, Adios. Adios is right. Well, you're halfway there now. Two more, and you'll have a thousand. How many holes on a standard telephone dial? How many holes? Ten. Ten is right. Almost got the thousand. One more right. All right, this is the big one now. What is the staff of life? Bread. That's right, you got four right. And you win $1,000. Now you won $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can go for $2,000. And if you try for the 2000 later, if you try for the 2000 listen don't, to me, please. Don't tell them. If you try for the 2000 later and miss it, you wind up with $500. Thank you. Abel Taft and Ace Williams are waiting to talk to you, Groucho. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50. <laughs> it's a common way, something you'll find around the house. <laughs> Mabel Taft and uh, Ace Williams, eh? Mabel, what is your hometown? Well, I was and born... And phone number. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born in downtown L.A., but lived in the valley all my life. Oh. Well, is there a valley downtown in L.A.? <laughs> well, well, you're very attractive, uh, Mabel. Could you give us some uh, vital statistics about yourself? Well, yes, I'm 22, been married three and a half years, and I have two little girls named Judy and Sherry. What recommendations do you have for others just starting out in the sea of matrimony? Well, we feel that That's marriage... pretty poetic, isn't yes, it, the sea of matrimony? Very good. That means you usually get sunk as soon as you leave the boat. <laughs> Well, we feel the marriage is a 50-50 proposition and that right. uh, it is. each one should... Uh, you keep 50% of your salary and 100 of his. <laughs> <laughs> I wish so, but... Uh, and we also feel that uh, husbands and wives should have nights out uh, yeah. separately. Well, when is your next night out? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I get nights out, too. Yeah. Now, where do you go and you... Why do you, why do you think you should have separate nights? Well, because, uh, well, you know, you're together all the time, and it's just a little break, you know. Uh -huh. and, well, it's a uh, good break for somebody. I don't know what <laughs> Well, now, where do you go on your nights out? Well, I go to showers and to... Um... Can't you take a shower at home? <laughs> <laughs> where does your husband go on his nights out? Well, he goes hunting and fishing. He does, eh? <laughs> Where does he go hunting at night? What is he hunting, owls? <laughs> goes to the owl drugstore, I guess. He doesn't go at night. He goes early in the morning and comes back late at night. Oh, I see. <laughs> Mr. Williams, where are you from, Mr. Williams? I'm from a little town in Darrell called Rising Sun. 
Rising sun? That's in Japan, isn't no, it? No, no, that's, that's over near the east coast, near... Uh, well, I, over... I have a rising sun. You know, his name is Arthur, and he usually rises around two in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of work do you do, Ace? Oh, I'm retired, Groucho. I'm retired from the Air Force after 26 years' <laughs> service as a oh. master sergeant. Master sergeant? No, oh, well, that's a pretty imposing title, isn't it, huh? How old are you, Ace? Forty-two. Forty-two. Forty-two huh? years. How, how come they... Uh, Ace, that isn't your real name, is it? No, my name... real name's Albert. Well, where'd you get the <laughs> name Ace? Are you a card? Oh, no, no. I got that name pinned on me a few years ago by mistake when I was flying on the first time in a plane at Mitchell Field. I mistook the compass for the gasoline gauge. The plane was flying east, and I thought it was a gasoline gauge showing empty, so I bailed out on the guy. <laughs> See, I was confused. See? And that's why they call you Ace? Bailout Ace. Bailout Ace, mm -hmm. huh? The guy was practicing landing, see, and before that he said he hadn't been up in a long time, so I told the fellow that was fixing me up with a hop, I said, what's the matter, you crazy? Gonna send me up a fellow that hasn't been up in a long time? He says, we're the best flyer we got. So, some people can talk into anything. Before I knew it, I was in the plane on my way. So he flew over Mineola, yeah. back to Mitchell, takes off, so while all this was going on, I happened to look up and see it. an E. I was in the rear seat of the plane. It was an 019, an, an observation job. And I says, now he's running out of gas and don't know it. Now I know I'm going to get out. So I started looking around for a, a, a haystack because I wanted to land something soft. Yeah. Hmm? They're easy to find when you're up there. Yeah. <laughs> so he flew over Roosevelt Field and he pointed and he pointed down. So I figured, well, this guy knows he's cracking up. He knows he's... Uh, uh, running out of gas, so he wants me to go out. So I did. And the next day, I found out that I made a mistake. He wasn't up there. He couldn't get down. He was practicing landing. He wasn't flying... It wasn't the gasoline gauge. He was flying east. And the reason he pointed at Roosevelt Speedway was because he wanted to show it to me. And he did. I landed right in the middle of it. <laughs> I believe it did happen. Well, that, that's very interesting, Ace. Now, I want you to answer me one question. What was your job in the Air Force? Were you a wind tunnel? <laughs> no, I... Well, partly, yes. Surprise, Sergeant. Well, you're a very cute couple, and it's been fun talking to you. Now we're going to play your Bet Your Life, and this is how we play it. I've got a long list of questions here, and on the subject that you selected before the show. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Now, if you answer four questions in a row, you win $1,000, plus a chance later of going for $2,000. All right, you selected a movie quiz. Uh, these are about big pictures of the last 20 years. See if you can get four in a row right. Here we go. In 1943, Jennifer Jones played the part of a girl who witnessed a miracle at Lourdes. What was the picture? Uh, the Song of Bernadette. That's, that's right. Now, scr scratch this out. Uh, so I'll know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, uh, you have three more and you'll have $1,000, as I understand it. All right. Uh, who was the first movie? What was the first movie to win an Academy Award? Cisco Kid. No, no, it was wings. Well, don't get another one wrong or you'll be Now you got altogether. one wrong. You get another one wrong and you're, you're all through. All right, who, who produced Fantasia? Oh. Walt Disney? Walt Disney is right. Now you got one right. <laughs> Three more to go for that thousand dollars. All right, now what movie featured a sea captain who nervously rolled steel balls when the going got tough? Um. What movie? Yes, yes, want to take a flying jump? Kane Mutiny. Kane Mutiny is right. <laughs> two more and you'll have a thousand dollars. Now you got two right. Now who played the romantic lead opposite Bill Holden and Picnic? Oh, uh, Kim Novak. Kim Novak is right. Now you got three. <laughs> one more right and you'll have a thousand dollars. Now here's the killer. Here's the big one, all right. Who starred in the court jester? Dan Danny Kaye. Danny Kaye is right. <laughs> so you win $1,000. Oh, you won $1,000. Yeah. Now, you can keep it and quit, or else you can go for $2,000 at the end of the show. If you try for the $2,000 later and miss it, you wind up with $500 for the night. Now, go over there and think about it, and we'll let you know later. I'm sure okay, glad you came along. You. Right. Chapman and Mr. R.M. Buckley are ready to play You Bet Your Life, Groucho. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you see every day. R.M. Buckley and Jerry Chapman, eh? Jerry, I'll start with you. You're the shortest. Where do you hail from, Jerry? I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. 
But when I was 15 months old, we left there and traveled all over the country. Oh. Well, are you married, Jerry? Oh, yes, I am. After we were married, my husband enlisted in the Air Force, and we traveled around for four more years. Well, did you ever settle down long enough to raise a family? Well, no, but I had one. My children were born from one end of the country to the other. There were only three, though. Mm. You must have pretty long children if they were born. <laughs> Jerry, do you have any other interests, or are you merely a housewife? Merely a housewife? Huh. A housewife has the most important and the hardest job in the world. You she... really believe that? Why, certainly I do. Thank you, one that's and all. That's the husbands. You can see the educated part of the audience No, no, that's there. not true. That's oh, the wives yes. forcing the husbands to applaud. <laughs> okay, I'm convinced. I think it's a sad commentary on the American scene that we spend a whole week honoring pickles and only one day for mother. That's right. That's right. That's been received with a resounding silence. <laughs> a lot of pickle fanciers in the audience. <laughs> and you are Mr... Mr. R.M. Buckley, huh? That's right, sir. What does the uh, R.M. stand for, Mr. Buckley? Richard Merle. Richard, well, that's a fine name. You're right, sir. Great dignity. Thank you. <laughs> Where is your hometown, uh, well, Monsieur I, Buckley? I was born in Tuolumne, California, Gaucho. It's a little tiny town up above Sonora, California. Then I went down to Stockton and uh, finished my schooling there. Then well, Mr. Was... Buckley, that Mr. sounds pretty formal. Uh, what do your friends usually call you? Well, they, my friends usually call me Lord Buckley. Lord Buckley? How'd you get to be a lord? Are you a wrestler? Well, no, sir. You see, that's a philosophy of mine that I claim that all ladies and gentlemen are lords and ladies. Were it not to be so in calculi, the king and queen could not sit their throne. For it's very obvious that the Empire State Building can be built on the frog patch. And if the sphere swings, the first five floors must have the ruby windows. You know, all I asked him was what his name was. <laughs> I'd ask you to repeat that, but I'm afraid the second time you might say it the same way you did the first time. Now, is there a Lady Buckley uh, stashed away in a castle someplace? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, my Behind Lady a Buckley. Moat? Yes. No, no, she's in the castle. She's tucked very beautifully in the castle. Lady Buckley's a very exquisite, charming, gracious, talented lady. Is she built on a frog pond, too? <laughs> no, no, sir. She... I, I'm sure she's a lady, Mr. Buckley, and I respect you for speaking so well of her. How did you acquire this smooth way with women? I've been married six times. <laughs> Well, if you'd have learned anything, you wouldn't have gotten married the second time. <laughs> Six times you've been married? Yes, sir. Well, uh, are you planning on fighting any more preliminaries, or is this, is this current one the, the main bout? No, no, I've been married for ten years, sir. I have a divine young boy, four years old, and little girl, five. I see. The other five went rather rapidly, didn't they? They quite say, so, yes. Over the dam in no time. High rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been in Vaudeville? You have a very familiar look about you. Yes, sir. I toured Vaudeville for quite some time, sir. I suspected this, sir. Thank you. Well, what kind of a racket are you in now? <laughs> well, at the moment, sir, I'm working for a magazine called Dig. Dig? Yes, sir. D-I-G? Yes, sir. Just what is this rag? Well, I've been translating. I'm a professor of hippology, sir. Oh. Yes, I've been translating the work of the old masters, such as... Uh, Poe, Shakespeare, Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln just translated his address recently. Shakespeare is very interesting in, in hip. It has a renewal power, a tremendous sense of renewal. Uh, Henry Miller calls it an international language because it takes the old masters and brings them up to the very instant of today and over the fence of now and on the pad of the Vance. <laughs> I hear a lot of people applauding. If there's anybody in the audience that understands that, will you stand up and explain it to me? Well, uh, Are you going to stand there and tell me Shakespeare could have written his works better in jive talk? Uh, yes, sir. Have you, um, have you, uh, are you familiar with Shakespeare's funeral oration? The, the, no, uh, but I was very familiar with a girl in one of Shakespeare's company at one time. <laughs> Translation for you. Well, I certainly wish you would. And give us an example. I could do an inch and a half of the Friends, Romans, Countrymen. I would love it. Huh? In hip, it blows this way. It says, hipsters, flipsters, and finger, pop in daddy's knock me your lobes. 
means give me your ears, I presume. I came here to lay Caesar out, not to hip you to him. He's got Elvis Presley in here, too. The bad jazz that a cat blows wails long after he's cut out. <laughs> You said a hat full there, Lord. The groovy... Just a moment now. Shh. The groovy is often stashed with their frames, so don't put Caesar down. That's wonderful. That's wonderful, Lord. All I can say is that it's a good thing that Shakespeare's dead. <laughs> and if he'd been alive to hear it, that would have killed him. No, that was very clever. It's very difficult to do what you did. Uh, well, you're an extremely quaint couple, even for our show. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I, and uh, you look like a very wealthy and successful confidence man. Thank you. <laughs> and I wouldn't be at all surprised if somewhere in the back you have a suitcase full of counterfeit money. Oh, sir, I beg of you. <laughs> I'm sure you'd like to win some real money, wouldn't you, Lord? Uh, that would be delightful. Yeah, that would be a change from what you've been handling. I, <laughs> I presume you both understand how we play, you bet your life? Yes, sir. All right, well, let's try it. You selected popular music of the last 20 years. And you used to be in vaudeville. This ought to be a cinch for you. Now, one answer between you and get together. Get four in a row right and you win $1,000. Miss two in a row and you're through. Jack Meekham will play the tune. You tell me the name of the song. Here we go. What is it? You made me love That's you. That's right. You're absolutely right. Tell him, George. You're on the right track. Three more right, and you'll have a thousand dollars. Oh, boy. What is this track you're talking about? Is this a train you're referring to? A figure of speech. Oh, I see. Well, that's a figure of speech. <laughs> <laughs> There's the train. <laughs> All right, here we go. This one's a familiar tune. Name it. What is it? You said it, kid. Uh, tisket a tasket. You're halfway there now. Two more right, and you'll have a thousand dollars. Can you sing that, uh, Mr. Boy? A tisket, a tasket, a brown and yellow basket. Baba ja 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 Presley. Thank you. <laughs> Not so old either. He's had six wives, don't forget. All right, what is this one? The lucky lady, the, 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 the baby from Shady Lane. That's close enough. That's close enough. It's that the naughty lady. Lane, naughty lady from Naughty Shady lady of Shady Lane. And you're very lucky that you got this man here to help you out. <laughs> All right, here we go for the big one now. Tell me the name of this one. <laughs> Autumn in New York? That's right, Autumn in New York is right, and you win the money. All right, you won $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can go for $2,000 at the end of the show. If you try for the $2,000 and miss, you wind up with $500 for the both of you. Now, go over and sit down and think about it, and it's a lot of money. You make your decision. You bet your life. Groucho, Mrs. Cooper and her partner have decided to try for the $2,000. Our other two couples decided to keep their $1,000 and quit. So here's Mrs. Cooper and Mr. Sean Moore Rice, all set for the big money. You've got your four questions right in a row, and you now are going to try for $2,000. All right, here it is. One answer now. Each year, millions of people spend their vacations in our great national parks. For $2,000, for $2 tell me, in what state is Isle Royal? R-O-I-L-E. National Park. I-S-L-E. R-O-I-L-E National Park. What's the answer you've decided upon? Louisiana. No, I'm sorry. It's Michigan. Isle Royal National Park. It's oh. in Michigan. Sorry you missed it, but you wind up with uh, $500, so that isn't so bad. Congratulations and thanks. <laughs>